necessary to flatten the curve. And that has averted what was possibly a worst case scenario. And this has been an incredible sacrifice. The economic and humanitarian cost, people out of work, lost wages, small businesses closed, is staggering. But this sacrifice has saved many thousands of lives, and that cannot be understated. Continued vig vigilance in following social distancing guidelines is necessary to slow the infections and to help us gradually and safely bring our economy back online, which is absolutely vital. So let's look at where we are today. As you can see, we have 652 hospitalizations, which is down from yesterday when we had 701 COVID positive and patients under investigation. But it's still a significant increase from where we were in early April. There are 159 patients in our intensive care units, which is down from 168 yesterday. And we have 118 patients on our ventilators, which is slightly up from 114 from yesterday. Now here's some of the good news. Another 48 COVID patients were discharged yesterday to bring us up to a total of 1,082 patients who have been discharged from our hospitals since the first confirmed positive COVID patient. As we discussed yesterday, we have made huge progress as a region in lowering the reproductive factor or the rate at, at how many people are infected by a single individual that has the coronavirus. And this is key to stopping the spread and saving lives. If the models are correct, our continued vigilance in the days ahead should move us across the crest of hospitalizations and start to bring the number down gradually. And that is what we're all hoping to see. I know I am. That reduction gives us confidence that spread is decreasing in the community. And that further gives us confidence that we can gradually and safely bring more of our economy back online and allow society to begin to reopen as well. And this is absolutely what all of us want to accomplish. But we have to continue to monitor the data. We have to make sure that as we take these important steps, we do so equipped with the best possible information. And now I'd be happy to address some of the questions that we received from the media. Today was the expected peak uh, for the St. Louis area. Um, based on your modeling, have we reached the peak? Um, and if we have not reached the peak, what does that suggest? So just to explain a little bit about how models work, they are estimates. So um, although we would like to say, you know, on a particular day, this is going to, when the, when the peak is going to occur, um, the virus plays its own game. And so it will let us know when the peak has occurred. And the way that we'll figure that out is with, um, with data that comes afterwards. So it's only in reflecting back that we can really say whether this is the peak or not. Right now, what we'll do is continue to look at how many patients get hospitalized, how many are on ventilators, how many are in the intensive care unit. Um, but so we'll know once more data comes in, in the ensuing days and weeks, when our actual peak was. A follow-up from the same reporter. What exactly does the peak mean? Um, is that a specific number of deaths or hospitalizations a day, or every day, for a certain amount of time, or just one big sudden jump in any category over a one-day period? As I've mentioned in the past, uh, the peak, it's, it's not like uh, climbing a mountain and then coming down off of the mountain. It's more of cresting a gentle hill. And the reason for that is because of us slowing down uh, the rate of transmission in the community. And so what that did is it slowed down our rate of hospitalizations as well. And so the peak is probably not a great term to use. It's more of a cresting of cases uh, where we'll see the highest number of hospitalized patients in, in our hospitals. So it's not numbers of deaths or numbers of infections. It's the number of 
patients that are hospitalized in, in our collective task force hospitals. Is any antibody testing underway or in the works? If so, how does one engage? So antibody testing, um, as I've mentioned uh, on some previous shows, um, is, is uh, undergoing validation uh, right now. And so we believe within the next couple of weeks, um, there are a number of labs within the healthcare systems uh, that are validating the tests right now. So we believe within the next, I would say, couple of weeks, probably shorter than that, that those tests will be completed and that we'll begin to perform antibody tests. Now, a word of caution out there, um, there are a number of companies that are advertising for antibody tests, and many of these tests have not been validated nor approved by uh, the FDA. Um, and so uh, just because a test is out there and says it's an antibody test uh, doesn't mean that it's gone through the rigors of validation uh, so that we can show that the test is actually telling us what we want to know. Thank you. That concludes the list of questions received from members of the media prior to and during today's briefing. We will not be having a task force briefing tomorrow uh, via live stream. The task force will issue an update via press release. Uh, Monday morning, we'll begin to accept questions from members of the media for Monday afternoon's live stream. Thank you for tuning in.